Try to make it work now. Okay. All right, good morning. My name is Keith Ramsey, and I'm the president of the East Chester Gardens Resident Association. I'm proud to welcome each and every one of you to the East Chester Gardens Community Center. I've been an East Chester Gardens resident for about 45 years, and when I was a kid, I spent many afternoons playing with my friends in this particular center. This center was and is the focal point of our community. Today, everyone from toddlers to senior citizens enjoy this center every day. During the day, children take art classes and get homework help and the various other programs they have. In the evenings, teenagers play ball while senior citizens knit together. It's been about 15 years since uh, the center was last renovated. Uh, we've been dealing with crumbling floors and shifting floors. It's gotten so bad that some of the parents are uncomfortable sending their children to this particular site. I hope when the renovations are complete, our hardworking parents will feel comfortable again sending their children here. A self safe and enriching environment uh, is a place for the children to get help with their homework, play sports, or learn from our seniors while the parents finish their work the work day or take evening classes. And I, I, I just want to ask the people in the back, yes. is it, do the children of this community deserve better? Yes. 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 All right. And I, yes. I want to ask you another question. Do the seniors in this development deserve better? Yes, yes. we do. Yes, we do. I'm going to be like the Hebrew Israelite. Like, that's right. Mm, that's right. So today is a very exciting day because Mayor de Blasio and Speaker Hasty yeah. also think our kids deserve more, and they made sure we got the money to fix our community center. And I have to say, I am so grateful that these two individuals are here, and I know that Carl Hasty. He's like, uh, kind of like Chucky. He's a friend to them. He got our doors. He got our roofs. He does his thing. Now, Mayor de Blasio is doing his thing, and I'd like to uh, just give you, if you can give him a warm welcome, introduce the mayor of the city of New York. Thank you. Keith, thank you. Thank you. You know, I love the fact that Keith talked about what our kids need, what our seniors need. Mm -hmm. But he didn't take any credit for himself. But he's been providing a lot of leadership that's making this a better development. Let's thank Keith. And what Keith talked about is a community, a community that's strong, a community of people who do so much for this borough and this city. And I think it's important we recognize that. I, am, I often say when we talk about the people who live in NYCHA housing, there's often a misunderstanding in my view. And I say it simply, people live in NYCHA are the backbone of this city. Amen. Make this city work. Yes, that's right, that's right. And families that are strong, seniors who got a lot to teach, as you said, kids who are filled with potential. But we've got to invest in all that's good. We've got to help people to realize that potential. And that's what today is all about. I want to tell you that it is a pleasure to gather here. This is uh, the end of our city hall in your borough in the Bronx. And we have been all over the Bronx. I've been all over the Bronx, the deputy mayors, the commissioners. Everyone's focused on the Bronx. Look at the smile on Carl Hastie's face. <laughs> Carl Hastie believes that every week should be city hall in the Bronx week. And because Carl Hastie is a speaker of the New York State Assembly, uh, I think it would be commendable if uh, City Hall focused on the Bronx every day. <laughs> so, uh, and he certainly, I want to say, I'm going to bring him up in a moment, but he has, uh, he has often used the power that he has achieved to focus resources back on the grassroots. And I want you to think about that. There are, there are people who achieve power and they only think about themselves. And there are people who achieve power, and they only think about the other powerful people. Mm -hmm. But when someone achieves power and uses it to help people at the grassroots, that's the way it's supposed to be, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So I want to thank you, Speaker, for that. I want to thank our colleagues in government uh, who have been extraordinary advocates for all the people who live in public housing, and they have demanded the kinds of investments we need. 
Uh, first of all, uh, Senator Bailey, I want to say thank you for you being here, but I also want to say thank you for your leadership in Albany. Uh, you know, we had a momentous day yesterday, uh, resolving a lot of issues in terms of public housing, coming to agreement with the federal government, and that's a good thing. That's going to help us move forward. I hope now we can get to the point where we can bring those state resources we've been waiting for forward. And the speaker, obviously, we've been talking about this. I hope the way is now clear that we can get that additional investment to help people here and so many other developments. So thank you for your leadership. Councilman Andy King, uh, I want everyone to know I made the huge mistake earlier in the week. We were at a couple of events together here in Bronx Week, and I was shocked that Andy King was wearing suits that looked actually kind of conventional. <laughs> and I made fun of him. I said, I said he was getting conservative. I said he looked like a college professor. Well, obviously, my friends, I have obviously sparked something here. I, I pushed a button. Something happened, and Andy King decided to fight back. And uh, he, he, does, he doesn't do anything halfway. So, Andy, I stand corrected, Council Member King. And again, thank you for your extraordinary leadership. And the City Council has been with us every step of the way. We have made huge investments over the last years, separate from any of the discussion with the federal government, we had already put in almost $4 billion of new investments in public housing in the city. And we were able to do it because the council supported us every step of the way and believed it. So let's thank the senator, let's thank the council member for all they do. <laughs> now I'm gonna be real quick, but I have to say this. You know, when uh, I spend time in the Bronx, it doesn't take too long before people say what they are feeling about the history of how this city has treated the Bronx. And we all know it, and it's good to say it out loud. For decades and decades, the Bronx did not get its fair share. It's just a statement of fact. For decades and decades, the Bronx was too often ignored by our city government. And our job is to right that wrong. Our job is to recognize that notion. It's in scripture, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. To make sure the people who work so hard get their fair share. And certainly, when it comes to public housing, federal government stopped giving public housing the level of investment it needed decades ago. Mm -hmm. State government followed suit. City too often didn't give enough focus to public housing. So the residents were here, but the cavalry never came. And we are trying to right that wrong as well by making real investments, putting real focus on so we can make public housing everything it once was and everything it should be again. That's what we are focused on. And today is an example of that. Today we get a chance to right another wrong. Here you have at East Chester Gardens this community center, which you heard how much it means to people. It's so important for our seniors. It's so important for our children. When our parents know the children have a good and safe place to be, to learn and grow, that's an incredible relief to our parents, our hardworking parents, yes. who are putting so much time and energy and love into the lives of our kids, who are working one job, two jobs. We have to make sure the community center is everything it should be for them. So I'm pleased to announce a $3.7 million investment to make this community center great. And I always say to people, if you want great outcomes from our kids, you've got to invest in them, like everything else in life. So you want them to be all they can be. You want them to develop their intellectual skills. You want them to believe in their potential. We'll give them the kind of after-school programs that stretch the school day and make them everything they were meant to be. You want them to have a safe place so they don't get in trouble. Give them activities at night so they know there's something they can choose and certainly, if we want to honor our seniors, and we all talk about our seniors, and we honor our seniors, and they pave the way, well, we got to invest in them if we want to honor them. So having the right programs for our seniors makes a difference. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure you're saying, what will that $3.7 million buy? You know, he, he has a, accounting in uh, excuse me, a background in accounting and mathematics. And when you speak to uh, Speaker Hasty, he is very clear about the power of each dollar, but he wants to know what it'll buy. And that's good, because he governs over a huge budget. Mr. Speaker, we will get a new basketball court. 
We will get upgraded heat and upgraded air conditioning. Upgraded classrooms. And something we all believe in, new plumbing. All right. <laughs> and we are starting the design work right away so we can get this up and running quickly. Now, you know, I want to have a day when every child in this city feels that they are so special, they are so uplifted, that there is such focus on their potential that they can feel it. Mm -hmm. They can feel pride and hope. Mm -hmm. We know for a long time too many of our children were given the opposite message by our society and sometimes even by our government. <coughs> I want our children to go into a center like this and feel they know they're special because the investment is there for them and they are worth it. They are worth it, right? Yeah. So I'll conclude, I'm going to say a few words in Spanish and then turn to the speaker. But just to say this, uh, yesterday, uh, the agreement we came to with the federal government is going to move us forward with public housing. We have already made, as I said, almost $4 billion in investments before this agreement. We lock in this agreement, and I do it willingly, happily, $2.2 billion more for public housing over the coming years to really spark a turnaround. The road is clear now to make public housing strong again in this city. Yeah. So we have said the goal we have for this city and it's, it's based on the fact that this city is so capable of greatness. We are right now the safest big city in America, and we are proud of that, the safest big city in America. I want us to be... I want us to be the fairest big city in America. I want us to be a place where it's fair and everyone gets treated right. Few words quickly in Spanish. Hoy estamos anunciando una inversión de casi 4 millones de dólares en el centro comunitario de East Chester Gardens. Por décadas, el Bronx no ha tenido el apoyo que merecen. Pero estamos cambiando eso y paso a paso construyendo la ciudad grande más justa del país. Now, we're going to be the fairest big city in America. I can tell you one of the big reasons is because we have a champion for this city in Albany. And I've, I'll say it every time. I don't care if he says I repeat myself too much. There are so many times, year after year, when the city's back is against the wall in Albany, and there's one person who stands up and makes all the difference and saves the day, and that is Speaker Carl Hasty. And... Some of you may remember that old ad on television for E.F. Hutton. They said, when E.F. E. F. Hutton speaks, people listen. Yeah. Carl Hasty speaks, people listen. He said, we need this, we need this community center fixed. And yes. yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Speaker. I'm not sure why you didn't need to use this. So, well, first, Mr. Mayor, let me thank you uh, um, for coming here to the Bronx, coming here to East Chester Gardens, and... Um, and I'm happy that you came to an agreement with, uh, with, with HUD, but I do think one thing was missing. Uh, Secretary Carson should have came with a check for, uh, for, for NYCHA as well. Uh, it's fine to, uh, to talk about um, the situations, and we know that it's been decades of neglect by the federal government when it comes to public housing. Uh, so the comments that, um, as in if this is, only the city's fault, I think, is a little unfortunate, and he should have come with a big fat check. And there's still time, so there's Secretary time. Carson, there's if you're listening. Time. And then for me, um, this community and this community center in East Chester Gardens, I, I grew up in the valley, and although I was in a, an, I say, in a rivalry neighborhood, one of the things that always united us is when I came and I played basketball out here and, and actually as I was coming here I just saw one of the guys I used to, to, to play basketball with so this kind of stuff like really means a lot to me personally uh, one because I've lived my entire life in this in this community and the people in East Chester Gardens have been very good to me and very supportive of me throughout my entire 19 years in office and even before that a lot of these people have known me since I was a little little boy 
Even though I'm getting a little older, I still try to think I'm a little boy. Um, but I remember coming here last summer, um, and when I I saw the situation, I kind of, I, I, and Keith, forgive me, where are you? I said to him, I said, Keith, I said, you, you should have called me and told me, you know, about this. And, and, and when I did see it and, and, you know, Keith, you know, he, you know, the, the humble guy that he is, he says, I don't want to bother you. But I'm like, Keith, that, I mean, that's what I'm here for. You know, you're supposed to bother me. And then right after that, I did reach out um, and also in consultation, of course, with Senator Bailey and Councilman King. And we said we had to uh, do something. And, and we all in unison reached out uh, to the mayor's office. And I'm happy that here we are, um, not even uh, eight months later, and uh, to get a commitment to uh, to fix up this uh, this this community center. So I'm just very happy uh, that we're able to uh, to do this. Um, show it that we care for uh, our, our residents in in NYCHA. A lot of times it seems the NYCHA residents I know they feel like they're forgotten, but they're not. I'm happy that even when I first became speaker, the actual state funding to NYCHA happened only after I became speaker. So that just shows where. Uh, my commitment is and, and um, knowing and growing up and, and being heavily involved in all five housing developments in my assembly district is you always have to take care of home and NYCHA is considered home to me. So I'm just happy that we're able to do this. And thank you again, Mr. Mayor, for being very responsive uh, to the needs of the people in the, in the Northeast Bronx. Thank you. Well done. All right, everybody. We're going to have a beautiful new center. Congratulations to everybody. Yeah.